Neo. Some bugs in the system. Using audio and video feed. You're on your own, kid. Alright, welcome back to the Matrix Path of Neo Commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Today we are going to be doing some winter training, which doesn't exactly revolve around winter as much as it does sword training, but in a nutshell, what this training segment is going to do is it's essentially going to teach you, you know, multiple opponent combat, which uh, can also let you pull off some wicked combos with the sword, as I uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, this is also a level that I remember quite vividly from my... Uh, earlier playthroughs of the game because this level scared the shit out of me. I'm not exactly sure why, although I guess maybe it's because of the fact that it was in black and white that it did, but anyway, I think you'll see the reason pretty soon. In fact, you'll see it right now. Oh god, it's a ghost. Anyway, the spirit Og Ogami? Ogami? Fuck, I don't know Japanese that well. I haven't watched enough Japanese animes to tell my uh, fucking names. Yeah, but anyway, basically, Ogami challenges us to a fight and, well, like, honorable ninjas, uh, samurais, I don't really know. Yeah, we gotta take him up on his challenge, and he, for some reason, spills, uh, green code, which, when I was a kid, honestly reminded me of Mountain Dew. I don't know why, I guess maybe I drank a lot of Mountain Dew as a kid, because, you know, I was MLG420 Blazer, y'all. Of course, that was before, you know, all the bloody MLG and, you know, pro-internet gamer dude bros took over the world. But anyway, you're just kind of following Ogami all throughout this, uh... Oh, fuck, I forgot what the name of this... Oh, the Pagoda, that's it. You're just following all throughout the Pagoda, and if you touch that green code, you will get hurt, slightly. Anyway, you can just destroy this Pagoda, you know, dishonoring the, the family who owns this place's ancestors. You dishonor my ancestors. I'm sorry for offending any Asian viewers of mine, but uh, sorry. That's just how I roll. Uh, and we finally reached the end, and I'm gonna let this part play because this part scared the hell out of me when I was a kid and kind of forced me to stop playing for a little. Mind you, I was seven years old at the time. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't know whether it was the fact that the guy was shouting at me in Japanese or, I don't know, maybe because of the whole black and white filter thing or the fact that he said that I had gone mad uh, scared me when I was age 7, but uh, yeah, this room really terrified me. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe I guess maybe considering the fact that it was very foreign to me at the time was kind of a reason for that, but I don't know man, it was just freaking me out, you know? But, um, eventually, you know, I went back to this game because I loved it so much, and I eventually beat it. In fact, uh, doing this sequence right now, actually, is kind of catharsis, actually, um, in that sense. But also, I kind of realized that these enemies could be beaten easily. Although, I guess this kind of has given me a fear of, like, Asian ninjas. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's kind of redundant when I say Asian ninjas, because ninjas are of origin in Asia. Fuck, redundancy is redundant. But, uh, anyway, let's go off and... Oh, wait, not yet. Because, you know, I feel the need to kill more of these people who are probably just going about their day and just doing nothing but, you know, kicking back, doing whatever, training with their swords. But, um, yeah, you kind of do have to wipe out all the uh, people in this room, otherwise you will not be able to progress because a line of green code, which uh, tank prevents you from leaving... Oh, and, uh... Uh, just barring that for a second, pressing the pause button has a very cool effect in which, because whenever you press the pause button in the game, you can pretty much just see everything in code, which is really, really cool because it's like totally stylized, man. I don't know, I, I just always thought it looked pretty cool. But then again, emerald green is my favorite color. <laughs> I accept your challenge, Ogami. Prepare to face against the one. Wah! 
But, um, yeah. One thing that Ogami loves to do, much like the, uh, you know, old uh, hippie ninja dude in the uh, kung fu training and the, I think maybe even the, uh, you know, badass voice guy from the uh, sword training thing before, yeah, he likes to initiate a killing blow without warning, which is something that you really need to watch out for, not that you'd really have a chance to defend against it anyway, but, uh, yeah, just keep on the lookout for it. But, uh, Ogami should be no issue if you really know how to dodge. And, uh, you know, just keep your sword combat up and things should be good. And, uh, again, it might just be me or the fact that I'm feeling pretty tired right now, but, uh, I swear to god, Ogami's icon reminds me of Rob Zombie a little bit. I don't know, maybe it's because I can't really see it well from the, uh, uh bloody screen, but that's just what I see, man. Anyway, we'll just continue to kick Ogami's ass. What kind of a name is Ogami, actually? I don't know. It just sounds weird. And thus we have defeated a ghost. Can you hear me? Ah yes, it's about damn time you've took control of this on? program tank. Oh mouse. Yeah, for those of you who don't know who the hell these characters are in the Matrix, or at least for the first movie anyway, Mouse was essentially the guy who wielded those double machine guns and uh well he basically just shot up a bunch of police before he died. Anyway, this is the weirdest way you actually get an upgrade in the game. You essentially just collect it through a scroll. I don't exactly know why this is. Maybe for the fact that it's stylized, but hey, it's cool, man. So yeah, to use a killing blow in combat, you essentially just um, hold down L1 for focus and this hold the circle button until it's fully charged and then fire away. Yo, watch out. This place and uh, apparently fire. this pagoda just suddenly got lit on fire for some reason. And I don't think there's a way to get crushed by that uh, falling debris, I'm pretty sure it just happens on its own. And there's no turning back it seems, so Neo must fight! Oh and uh, you can also chuck the uh, bloody ninja guys into the fire as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> I like the fact that I'm using cool in the bloody winter training portion of the game. Ain't that something, man. Also, I apologize if I'm not speaking uh, as frequently or as uh, motor mouthy as I used to be. I've uh, just finished uh, doing a lot of death growl vocals for a, uh, well, outside of the YouTubes and the things I do in life. But uh, yeah, my voice is pretty short right now, so yeah, I apologize for that. But anyway, we have kicked some ninjury ass, and now, well, we get to go outside to do the actual winter point of the winter training. But first off, we gotta destroy the rest of this pagoda, because, you know, it's not as if the fire damage has really done enough. Ack. But anyway, we're finally outside. As you can see, this program was designed for multiple opponent combat training. Cypher didn't think he would make it through the burning hall. Well done. Fuck you, now, Cypher. focus. Here comes the final wave. Okay, so now we're at the... well... Pretty much we're at the home stretch of this training sequence, basically what we're going to be doing is, well, we're pretty much just fighting harder versions of the ninjas we fought inside, although the only way you can really tell that they're uh, more difficult is because of the fact that they wear hats. Ooh. Yeah, man, it's some real scary shit, because you know when a ninja's wearing a hat, they mean business. Although, honestly, they kind of remind me of Raiden from Mortal Kombat, which is a good thing, because I fucking love me some Mortal Kombat, man. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the only people you really need to watch out for is the, uh, uh the guys in the white robes. Oh, well, I guess the guys in the white coats, I guess, because, you know, they're kind of already wearing a robe. But anyway, uh, that was an example of a, uh, sword combo you can do. It is a pretty common one, actually, but it's one that's still pretty satisfying, because you can pretty much take down two birds and one stone, basically. Anyway. And... Slice, slice... Oh, I think he interrupted the combo, though. Anyway, it's time to slice and dice! Oh, yeah! And now we have lost our sword. How's Neo gonna get out of this one? Well, he's pretty much just gonna beat the shit out of him. Ooh, damn, Neo, you just got completely messed up. Oh man, now he's dizzy. Ooh. I don't like these odds. Hmm. It seems I've run out of things to talk about in the meantime. Um. Fuck. Actually, let's talk about Doug Walker's review of The Matrix. I, 
I may have brought it up before, but, uh, well, let's just say that review was biased as fuck, especially for the reasons of the fact that, you know, a lot of the, uh, problems he discussed in the movie were pretty much self-explanatory within the first movie. I know I'm talking about over the dialogue here, but, uh, yeah. All I can- I- just to footnote it, Doug Walker's review of The Matrix was biased as fuck, and- you know, honestly, the fact that he tended to parody things that, uh, you know, were pretty much just like, Tom, that's not a messiah's name. <coughs> Ting! A lot of the humor fell flat, and honestly, at the same time, it just... It just sucked. I mean, you could argue that the, the, the nostalgia critic was going downhill with the skits anyway, but... Ugh, God damn, it's just terrible. But anyway, after destroying some of the Pagoda's property, we can now finally get into... this. Anyway... Oh, now they're replaying the bloody sound clip from when you were inside the Pagoda. I, I don't know why, but I still get- I still get- I still cringe every time I hear that sound, you know? Because it's like... I mean, again, I guess childhood fear is one thing, but it's just like... Ugh. I mean, like, the only other time I've ever had that happen to me was, um... Uh, was actually when I- actually whenever I look at the box art of Silent Hill 3, because, uh, when I was a kid, I know this is really off topic, but considering it was made in Japan, it counts, technically speaking. But, uh, yeah, whenever I look at the box art of Silent Hill 3, I always get a- I always get a chill down my spine because of the fact that Heather's distorted face in the European box art just scares the hell out of me. It's like... Fucking... It's like- it's like it's fucking drilling into my soul, and it's just... Consuming it slowly. But anyway, we got two uh, white coats here. Anyway, Neo can probably disperse them, which he will eventually, because he is Neo, the one, the ultimate. And uh, from what I can see of the video's timeline, I can still go to a fair bit of things to talk about. Uh, actually, no, I don't, because I just ran out of things to talk about. That's the problem with doing a commentary, you gotta prepare for these things. And it's a good thing I'm just buying time for myself before the next interesting thing happens, which, uh, actually does kind of tie into the, uh, Matrix Reloaded statement of, uh, well, let's just say ghosts, demons, aliens, and, uh, vampires, I guess. It was, it was a little something that the Oracle brought up, actually. Yeah, I, it was something very brief, but at the same time, I felt like it was something that the, um, expanded Matrix universe really could have done with. I mean... I mean, granted, they already did a fair bit with the Animatrix and the, uh... I, I think even the Path of Neo to some extent with this scene, because guess what we're fighting now? We are fighting demons. And, uh, they are pretty damn weak, or at least on the normal difficulty. But anyway, going back to that, I mean, I... Well, first off, the Matrix really could use a lot more expanded media than it's really gotten, you know? I mean, like... Especially in recent years, because, like, compared to some franchises, like, I don't really have an accurate comparison for this, but, I don't know, I, d I just really think that The Matrix could use a bit more coverage, you know, like, maybe another, like, maybe even, like, a TV series, an anime, a video game, or anything, really, you know? I mean, I'm not asking for the Wachowskis to, uh, make another movie about it, but seriously, I'd just love to see, you know, The Matrix get a little bit more love, because, like, it's one of my favorite cyberpunk movies, man, and... You know, it just really deserves more than it got. Boot to the oh wow, he died standing up too. This is excellent. But hey, uh, you see what I mean by they're completely piss weak, <laughs> even though he just slammed me to the ground. No, he just sissy pushed me. Only I may sissy push people around. You must die, demon. Yeah, take that. I shall take your weapons. Oh, and, uh, by the way, for this next little sequence, prepare to see the most powerful move in the game, which you can never get. It shall be coming up right about now. Ooh, Jesus, man, I wish you could do that in-game. Like, you could, you could, like, completely obliterate Agent Smith and that, uh, Billy Brawl fight. But anyway, I'm running a bit short here, so I am Scully, keep it new metal, and, uh, see you next time in the Matrix Path of New York commentary. See ya!